Carlos Gutiérrez de Los Ángeles, California, damas y caballeros, y esta es la pelea estelar de la noche. Ocho asaltos en el peso, super mosca. And here we go, fine fans, with the main event tonight, eight rounds of boxing, this in the super flyweight division. Presentada por Oscar de la Hoyas, Golden Boy Promotions, y patrocinado por Tecate, Born Ball, y Casa México Tequila. It's in the taste. Los tres jueces por ese combate, the three judges scoring this bout at ringside, Rudy Barragán, Max Luca, and David Mendoza. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action in Cargando de Ring, and referee Raul Caiz. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready, and the fighters are ready. Los Angeles, make some noise if you are ready! Presentar primero la esquina azul, con los pantaloncillos plateados con rojo y un peso de 113 libras y tres cuartos. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing silver, trimmed in red, he weighed an officially 113 and three quarter pounds. Un veterano con ocho victorias, seis derrotas, dos empates y cinco ganadas por knockout. His professional record in 16 bouts, eight victories, six defeats, two draws and five wins by way of knockout. This is Ciudad Juárez, Chihuahua, Mexico, presentando The Dragon, Victor Pacias. Y sobre de la esquina roja, con los pantaloncillos dorados, con verde y un peso de 114 libras y un medias. His opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wears green and gold. He weighed it officially 114 and one half pounds. Con un record perfecto de ocho victorias, cero derrotas y cuatro ganadas por knockout. His professional record stands perfect with eight victories, no defeats, four wins coming by way of knockout. Presentando de San Antonio, Texas, here is the undefeated Joshua, el profesor. Ok, muchachos, ya les di las instrucciones allá abajo. Los dos traen el calzón muy alto. Golpes aquí están perfectamente bien. Cuidado con las cabezas y los golpes acá atrás no se, va, no se valen. Dense la mano y buena suerte a los dos. Hijo, así es. Raúl Caí Sr., el tercer man en el ring de noche. Ready to go with our main event, Joshua Franco, Victor Pacias from the Belasco Theater in downtown Mendoza, Los ready? Angeles. Box. Franco, a perfect 8 0, 4 KOs. He's got the green trim trunks, red and white, and Victor Pacias, 8 6 and 2. Pacias hasn't fought since 2015. He took all last year off. Why? He said, because I didn't want to fight. <laughs> About as honest a reply, yeah. I think, you, as you're going to get to that particular question. He said, I would get fights on two, uh, 10 days' notice. No, I wasn't ready for it. He was, I, I used to do that younger days. Now I need to actually have a camp. He's 28 years old. He's, I need to be smarter about my career. There's no need to fight for chunk change, as he said it, money. And there he is. He said he had a month and a half notice to take on Joshua Franco. He said he always stays in the gym in Ciudad Juarez, so he's ready to go. Franco, 21 years old, big time amateur out of San Antonio, Texas, now living and training in Riverside, California. Robert Garcia, Boxing Academy. Part of that crew with he and Jonathan Navarro, who got the victory tonight. Hector Tanahata. Franco, the older brother of Bam Rodriguez, 17 year old, will be turning pro in a couple of weeks. His father, Jesse Rodriguez, in his corner, along with Robert Garcia. Hundred and fifteen pounders. The professor is his nickname. The first day he showed up to Riverside, he had a nice little cardigan sweater, little glasses that he wears. So this kid doesn't look like a fighter. He looks more like a college professor. Name is stuck because that's, you know, any good nickname is given to you. You don't give it to yourself. And the last fighter known as the professor was the great Azuma Nelson. That's right. One of the great fighters from Accra, Ghana. Hall of Famer. He has a great force. Oh. 
Victor Dragon Pasillas, Dragon Dragon. Given to him by a trainer when he was a young fighter in Juarez. He just came out breathing fire like a dragon. Name stuck with him. And you know, Mexican trainers, they'll give you a, they don't know your name, they'll just give you a nickname. <laughs> Here, a quick left hook by Franco. Franco having a nice first round, just controlling distance, kind of touching the high guard of Macias, kind of gauging where he's at right now. What he's done here in the first round, I think, is a really good example of what they call ring generalship. You can see him curling that right hand. What I think I noticed about Macias defensively, his front hand, his left hand, he has it abnormally high, so it's going to be hard to really hit him with a straight right hand. You're going to have to kind of curl that right hand over the top and around the corner. Cesar Diez, Esquina Roja. You see Victor Pasillas. Those are the hands of Mickey Roman. He also had LA legend. By legend, I mean he's had every single fight you can think of, whether it's a club show, pay per view. Jesus Soto Carano. Oh. Carrasco never walked in with a favorite, huh? He just always walks in with the visiting corner. Yeah, he doesn't matter. He is a, a fighter for the people, of the people, <laughs> by the people. And, and my understanding is his last fight with Common Guy, where he kind of announced his retirement, I, I think he may have changed his mind, which honestly really? does not surprise me. But we'll see. Well, remember, uh, the last time we were in Velasco, it was a fighter who came from Mexico, first time in the United States. The kid had just a trainer, and he ended up having Soto Carras in his corner. After the weigh-in, Soto Carras gave him a tour of L.A. and took him to dinner. I mean, what more do you need for the guy? He's a, he's a prince. Not a king, but he's a prince. And here's action from round number one. A good, solid one for Franco. He was able to set the pace and box effectively against Pasillas. Sixth time that... Joshua Franco has fought at the Belasco Theater. It's a place where Golden Boy is developing their young talent in front of people instead of just 30 people at a venue at 3 in the afternoon. A little different vibe, though, when you're there and people are yelling and chilling people well, drinking the beers. I don't think there's any doubt. I don't know what the difference is. When you're fighting at, like, say, 4.30 in the afternoon and there's nobody there but the commission and the janitor, I think there might be more tension in gym sessions yeah. in the middle of an afternoon at times. Good left hook to the body yeah. by Franco. You can see, one thing I've noticed about Franco the last couple of fights, he's done, I think he's really starting to sharpen up that left hook. Well, that left hook is what knocked out Juan Bryant. Bazan, yeah. Bazan, and uh, the other card of... Canelo and Liam Smith, Canelo, I believe. Liam Smith, at, at Jerry's World. Yeah. And, and I thought that was an eye-opening performance because I thought it's the first time, in my view, he really showed a certain ability to explode, to really press that gas pedal and change speeds and intensity. Franco with the green trim trunks. Mitchell from San Antonio, Texas. One of the things he's noticed is that he's getting stronger at the age of 21. At one point, he sparred with Carlos Quadras. Also, Granovich, Abner Mars, he's sparred with in his career. Guys that have gone with Robert Garcia. That's what you were mentioning about uh, the work. The work that you get down there. You know, there's that old thing, iron sharpens iron. You mentioned Carlos Quadras will be returning March 18th on the Golovkin Jacobs undercard. He gave Roman Gonzalez an absolute yep. scare on September 10th at the form. It was a very heated 12-round fight. And should Franco develop into a true contender, eventually he will be facing guys like Quadras. At 115 pounds, he started boxing into 13, and the good uppercut landed by Joshua Franco. He's going for that overhand right. Bon Maria watching. Good friend Luis Carrasco back home. You know, the, la the last two fights, Beto, we've seen Franco get hit with counter punches that have stunned him. 
Uh, in this fight, it's pretty obvious that in, in the gym and just maybe even psychologically, Franco has made a concerted effort. When he's throwing punches, bring your hands back in proper defensive positioning real quickly. Be cognizant of the fact that something might be coming back at you. Diez, esquina roja, César. What's going on? We need to hit him. When you're inside, hit him. see the left hook, you see Frank really digging on that front foot, putting a lot of weight on top of his left foot and just twisting and turning. The left, which also turns into an uppercut at times, is becoming a real solid weapon for Franco. You the corner of Pussy is telling him, you gotta throw. And it's Franco that comes out a little bit aggressive. You know, usually that's the most simplistic of ring uh, instructions. On the opposite end, and once again, Franco again digging with that left hook. Robert Garcia, I think, likes the way things are going. He's saying, keep doing what you're doing. Be steady, be consistent. And I really like what Franco has shown. Real technical command here throughout the first two rounds and 30 seconds. That's what he's doing as he's progressing in his young career. Learning to be patient, one of the things that is that his patience has always been there, but listening to Robert is a different story. Getting there, being methodical. And also, for this night, he feels honored that Golden Boy will make him the main event. I like, you put extra pressure, he's like, no, no extra pressure, but I do want to perform yeah. and be impressive. I want to do it again. And as I mentioned before, Golden Boy matchmaker Robert Diaz told me earlier this week that they believe within a fight or two, he will be a 10-rounder, which signals to me that they are going to move relatively quickly with this young man. Victor Pasillas, favorite fighter growing up. You're like this one, Steve. From Mexicali. Not Tony Margarito. Model Metal. Paez. Oh, one of the true sports, one of the real, real, I think, showmen of the 80s and 90s. Said Paez was his favorite guy. He loved the style. He's like, that's not my style to show off like that, but I just loved it. The style. I still remember Paez being involved in one of the last 15 round fights in boxing history. It was on Tuesday night fights in Mexicali. It was about 115 degrees against Calvin Grove. We had to score, I believe, three knockdowns in the last round to pull out a thrilling victory. Mexicali, home of Diego de la Hoya, also home of Las Aguilas de Mexicali, who played in Serie de Caribe. Playing against Venezuela right now. So we're watching Victor Pasillas, Joshua Franco. Pasilla said he started boxing at the age of 13 because it was the only sport in the area he was growing up where it was free. All you have to do is walk in, <laughs> sign up, and it was free. You know, can I tell you, Beto, there's not a lot of things where people pay to get punched. No. Let's be honest. <laughs> he said soccer had to pay. Baseball had to pay. Basketball, I was short. Boxing was free, and it gave me a chance to learn how to defend myself. Oh, good left That hook. got him. That stung him. And he went down here, and it is over. Oh, it has been stopped. Third round. And Kai Sr., the referee, is asking for the doctor immediately. Beto, I thought that's an interesting call given the fact it was the first knockdown relatively early in the fight. I would, per, again, I'm not in there. I would have given the mandatory eight. That's what it's there for. But we spoke about this before. Franco's left hook is becoming a weapon. He's doing a better job of turning it over, getting it across his elbow, and hitting on the sweet spot. Uh, you're seeing a young fighter literally grow in front of our eyes. Joshua Franco improves a 9-0, his fifth stoppage. Wow, that was kind of a stunning end. Uh, yeah. It, it didn't seem to me like it was foreshadowing a one-punch knockout. And if you look at Franco's record coming in, eight fights, four knockouts, 50% percentage. But again, that left hand, he was really, really working on it at the gym, you could tell. Uh, I get the sense they're not hitting pool noodles at the Robert Garcia Boxing Academy. 
and you could literally see Pasillas' legs go out from under him, and it was a quick wave off uh, by a veteran referee that's certainly been around the block. The Royal Cae Senior has been all over the world referee in fights, so he stops up there. We didn't. Let's look at the replay here. Wow, that, that was just a snapping left hook, and then there's a kind of a cleanup shot, and I do think it was not the left hook that sent him down, but I think it was the left hook that stunned him, and he seemed to go rocking back on his heels, and in the two, three punches that followed it, subsequently finished the fight. Yeah, Kaiz immediately jumped in and ended the fight. No A count at yeah. all. Mm. Younger fighters, maybe yeah. you, you don't get the leeway. But regardless, Joshua Franco, Landed some vicious shots to end the fight. The professor took his opponent to school. I thought that was a strong all-around performance, Beto, by Franco. Even putting aside the exclamation point, leading into it, I thought he looked very, very technically proficient. Seemed to be boxing with a lot of yeah. confidence, and what we saw the last couple of fights was him get hurt once or twice. Um, he did not put himself in harm's way. I thought he was very responsible, both offensively and defensively tonight, and then he was able to finish with the flourish. A flourished power in uh, Riverside, the RGBA. Pita Fitness takes him to the hill. They run the Santa Monica Stairs. They're all of his anywhere they can to get the fitness. You're talking about the condition with Jonathan Navarro. It's not something you have to worry about. One thing also, Steve, you will never, ever see at the Garcia Boxing Academy, according to Pita, pool noodles. Yeah, and, and by the way, uh, Pita, he, 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 he said this to me on Twitter. Uh, Steve, we don't even own pool noodles. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I just like saying pool noodles. <laughs> you know those sticks. You know those foam sticks. I hate those things. Oh! I've always said about pool noodles. If you use them in the gym, if a boxer drowns, throw them to him. Don't have to train with them. <laughs> That's just my opinion, though. You're the one who told me, if you're going to go to the boxing gym, go to the heavy bag, stand there, yeah. and work. Yeah, a lot of shadow boxing. A lot, a lot of, of shadow boxing. It really does come back to the basics. But, Steve, come on. Hitting the water bag on your toes in just 35 times in 20 no, seconds. It's great. It's great for synchronized boxing. If that ever became an Olympic sport, um, there'd be a lot of good ones. Steve, it's great for <laughs> these boxers that are Instagram all-stars. <laughs> Like, you got a fight coming up? Yeah, when? I, 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 you know, my manager. <laughs> Who's your manager? Oh, you know. <laughs> Until you get in there, it's easy to talk, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Joshua Franco with a knockout. Joe Martinez waiting on the particulars. There you see the Belasco Theater. They'll be back at the Belasco February 17th. You'll see there. And then after that, Chimpa Gonzalez on March 10th. And let's look at the recap of the entire fight that went three rounds. And from the very onset, it was Joshua Franco who was in command, really showing a certain control of the ring, also cleaner technique, and, and you can see again, that left hook has become a real weapon for that young man from San Antonio. The referee for the fight for the ganador for knockout. The end comes officially two minutes, 32 seconds. Round number three, your winner by KO. He is still undefeated. Joshua, El Profesor Franco. Yeah, the professor, everybody back in San Antonio happy. There's a Robert Garcia Boxing Academy San Antonio edition run by the Donahata down there. They have 20 kids at the amateurs uh, right now. Five of them going to Kansas City for the silver gloves. Congratulations to them. And then, you know, when you're what knockout like that? The Spanish announcer comes in and just attacks you. Don't worry, we yeah. won't attack you with pool noodles. You know, I think tonight the professor gets an A. That, that was a solid performance. And I've said this many times, it's a mantra of mine. It's not if you win, how you win. And tonight, I think, showed a lot of control. And then he puts the exclamation point at the end. But I think we are seeing a fighter develop very, very well under the tutelage of Robert Garcia and company. First time he's a main event fighter. He said he wanted to put on a show. So everybody all over the United States and in the world, in Colombia watching, Ryan in Got Canada it. saw it. Professor with a KO. He's now 9-0, his fifth stoppage. And he switched yeah. easily. 
line is with the good line, the professor closer to tenure. Mm. You know, as Ricky, oh. Henderson, as Ricky Henderson once said, I don't have tenure, I got 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> Love Ricky. Imagine uh, him as a boxer. Oh, the punching professor. 